What's up ladies and gentlemen, it's Scott here and welcome back to Fudge Mop. But today we have a brand new Skyrim build for you guys and this one is for all the Red Guard fans. This build follows the old ways of the Yakuta, who hail from a continent across the ocean and as a result, the role playing fits perfectly with the Elder Scrolls rich and detailed lore. This is the Yakutan, inspired by stories of ancient warriors known as the Sword Singers and the mighty gods of the traditional Red Guards. The Yakutan channels age old knowledge and his ancestors blood to be the best warrior Skyrim has ever seen. And while there may be many challenges vying for the title of Skyrim's best warrior, none have such a refined understanding of the intricate art of sword fighting. But you'll learn more about this hidden knowledge in the backstory. Before we get into the build, don't forget that timestamps can be found in the description to help you find your way around the video. But with that said, we're gonna kick things off with the Yakutan's race, standing stone, and stats. The Yakutan is a red guard, and this means he can use his adrenaline rush ability to regenerate stamina 10 times faster for 60 seconds. He also has a natural 50% resistance to poison. Thanks to his red guard blood, he will also receive a plus 10 boost to one-handed and a plus five boost to block and smithing. And you can count on these being useful for the build. Early on, use the lover stone to help you level all of your various skills, but then switch out to the astronaut stone for the best coverage against mages. The Yakutan stat spread will be 70% health and 30% stamina. Despite being a stamina heavy build, we can afford to allocate more resources into being tanky as his stamina will be helped out massively by your absorb stamina weapon enchantment, your armor enchantments, and your many stamina regen potions. The Yakutan was born in a small rural town in the Alaki Desert. The town consisted of 28 buildings in total and took up very little space. The Yakuta knew it was exactly 28 because he was often so bored as a young child he'd occupy himself by counting things. The place was dwarfed by the endless expanses of the dusty desert beyond them and the Alaki made itself known to the town's inhabitants, showing no real regard for their efforts to maintain a surviving community. Agriculture was scarce considering the desolate landscape and those optimistic enough to attempt to grow crops often awoke in the morning to see a layer of sand had buried and dried out everything they grew in the thirsty soil below. As you can probably tell, life wasn't particularly exciting for the Red Guards of the Alakir, but one thing there was an abundance of was scimitars. In order to avoid starvation in such circumstances, the men of the town had to be incredible hunters, and in order to survive attacks from nomadic tribes, they had to be the very best warriors. The Yakutan's father was an exception. Though he claimed to be a master of the curved blade, the Yakutan had never seen him so much as wipe the dust gathering on his hilt from the sword. His father was a priest, a man devoted to the Yakutan pantheon and the ancient ancestors to the modern Red Guards. The only thing the Yakutan looked forward to more than practicing with his scimitar every day was listening to his father's preaching. His father told him stories of courageous warriors with skills that could not be matched by any mortal in all of the known world. There was the Satakal, who was so overwhelmingly powerful that he was known as the god of everything. Then there was Hun Ding, or the Make Way God, who made it his duty to empower particularly courageous Yakutans who step up to lead when the people need a leader. And finally, there are the sword singers, and these fascinated the Yakutan most because they were mortals, real soldiers chosen by the gods. Led by the legendary warrior Frandar Hunding, the Yakutan's idol, the sword singers took their people across the ocean from Yakuta to the place now known as Hammerfell in the aftermath of the devastating Battle of the Singers. Frandar Hunding was believed to be an aspect of Hunding. He made his way to Hammerfell and drove out Maluk, another god of the Yakutan pantheon, and his goblin horde. When he saw the artist's renditions of what Hunding had looked like, it was inspired to be the best swordsman alive. Maybe after that, he too could channel the Make Way God. He was, after all, Red Guard, with the ancient Yakutan blood coursing through his veins. Frandar had documented his wealth of knowledge during his life, putting all of his learned skills in a book called The Book of Circles. And as a house devoted to the old ways, the Yakutan's home had a special alcove carved above the hearth, just big enough to fit a copy of the book. It was a heavy tome, full of valuable information, and every night when he had washed off the day's dust after a long session with a scimitar, he would read it another chapter. The book contained precisely 38 different ways to grip a sword, 750 offensive and 1800 defensive positions, and nearly 9000 moves essential to sword mastery. The Yakutan wondered whether his brain could hope to contain such knowledge, but he knew that every trick added to his arsenal would give him an edge on his opponents. He would sit against the sandstone wall reading the book every night until his back ached and his father called him for dinner. And there, while he ate, he would visualize the techniques he'd learned ready to practice the following day. 
By the time he reached adulthood, the Yakutan looks like a true warrior of the Alakir. His father told him he was ready to leave the small town and venture into the world to seek enlightenment. Their gods respected leaders and travelers, strong warriors with the ability to lead people should the time ever come when their race faces extinction. Like Frandar Hunding, only without hordes of trusting followers, the Yakutan packed his belongings and made his way east. His journey eventually brought him to Cyrodiil, a place he knew to be full of aspiring heroes with a questionable grasp on knowledge required to properly properly wield a sword. He often drew the eyes of knights and mercenaries who looked at him in his curved blade like he was some kind of savage. None ever dared to confront him face to face though. While exploring and searching for opportunities of heroism, the Yakutan encountered a weeping woman outside a large cave mouth. Her young son and daughter had disappeared on their day's hike, and she had found a torn piece of her son's Colovian fur hat at the entrance of the cave. The Yakutan made his way into the cave, following a dark passageway guided by the sound of trickling water in the distance. When the muffled sound of the stream got louder, the narrow passageway opened into a large antechamber. It was filled with goblins. He watched from the darkness of the entryway as they hobbled about, bickering and cackling in their dialects. Above and about 30 paces away, tied to a post at the top of the incline, sat two children. The stream of water zigzags down the incline and ended up in a large pool where one of the goblins was engaged in a staring contest with his own reflection. The Yakutan whispered a curse at Maluk and prayed quietly for Hunding's blessing, and then he drew his scimitar from its scabbard. The goblins all turned to him at once and began frantically hobbling at him with their makeshift weapons in hand. While their arms were poorly crafted, the Yakutan didn't doubt that these filthy creatures were crawling with disease and infection. He had no intention of allowing them to draw blood. He carved through the attacking goblins with graceful ease. He called upon a variety of Frandar's countless techniques, totally overwhelming the goblins' abilities to protect his attacks. He brought the last one of them down with Hunding's 405th strike, the serpent's right fang as it pierces the eye. And it fell, clutching its eye in agony as it died. When the commotion faded to quiet, the Yakutan made his way up the incline and freed the children. He offered them water from the stream and then he led them back through the passageway. As he made his way back into the sunlight, he felt the makeway god's eye upon him. And then he waited for a sign to tell him where he would be needed to lead again. As he looked to the sky, the woman whose children he had just saved embraced him, overcome with relief. She and her children were Nords from Bruma, and they each had the honey blonde hair of the Northerners. The Yakutan offered to escort them home, leading them north. Once they were safely within Bruma's city walls, he continued north to Skyrim only he was caught on the border and taken to Helgen. Whether it be the headsman's axe or a dragon on the tower, there wasn't a moment that the Yakutan truly feared death. He was convinced that his gods would protect him even in this foreign land. After all, for gods with an affinity for exploration and leadership, why would they limit their power to exclusively within their domain of Hammerfell? No, the Yakutan was in Skyrim for a reason, and this confirmed to him that it wasn't for him to die. Despite seeming like a common Redguard fighter to most of Skyrim's inhabitants, this character is in tune with his ancestor's Yakutan roots. And this makes him far more powerful than every other Redguard. He will take the Yakutan pantheon very seriously, upholding traditional values and honoring the sword singers in combat. He will feel a connection between the Thum and the ancient techniques used by the sword singers. Therefore, he will be totally justified in embracing his dragonborn powers. He will be a true adventurer, exploring every location in Skyrim, especially the Dwarven Ruins. He will consistently be performing good deeds in order to win favor of his gods. At the end of the day, he will be a mighty warrior, but he will use it for good ends, protecting people and being a godly man like his father. As for factions, he will of course be following the main storyline and the Dragonborn DLC, committing himself to the title of Dragonborn. He will also join the Dawn Guards, siding with them to take down the vampires, and he'll also join the Companions Guild, but will cure the Werewolf Curse. The College of Winterhold is an option to help with alchemy and enchanting, plus mages often know the best places to go adventuring to find rare items and artifacts. With the Yakutan's backstory, roleplaying, and faction sorted, let's now take a look at his skills, spells, perks, and overall playstyle. The main skills for this build will be one-handed block, heavy armor, smithing, enchanting, and alchemy. He won't be using any spells, but the ancient knowledge active effect will be worth acquiring for help with dwarven smithing. Shouts aren't essential to the build's playstyle, but we've justified why he'd be open to using the thorns, so feel free to add some if there are any in particular that you like. But with that said, let's get into the essential perks from each skill tree. First up, we have one-handed, and this is the Yakutan's bread and butter. Almost all of this guy's brain capacity is filled with sword fighting techniques, and that puts him a cut above the rest of the warriors in Skyrim, who fight recklessly and flee at the sight of a true master of the blade. From the one-handed skill tree, go for the middle branch up to Savage Strike. Nothing overly fancy here. With these three perks, you'll do a ton of damage with your smithed up and enchanted scimitar. Savage Strike is always a fun pick, not just for 
for the 25% damage bonus to standing power attacks, but also for the opportunity to decapitate your foes. Next comes Block, and while this is often a skill neglected by the fast swinging agile red guard fighters, it's not neglected by the Yakudin. The Yakudin is an adventurer and his travels took him to the ancient Dwarven ruins, and there he found tools to add to his arsenal, making him entirely unique and unpredictable. One of these tools was a Dwarven shield. From the Block skill tree, take everything. With the skill tree optimized, you'll be able to perform powerful bashes, staggering and even disarming your enemies, and then you'll be able to quickly duck behind your shield to charge into them and send them flying. Lastly, quick reflexes will slow down time when blocking against heavy attacks. As a Yakudin backed by all of Frandar Hunding's ancient knowledge, he will have no trouble predicting and dodging just about every strike that comes his way. Next up, we have heavy armor, and because the Yakudin will be neglecting the light armor usually associated with the desert warriors, it is essential that he is strong enough to move as fast as those less encumbered than him. From the heavy armor skill tree, grab the full left branch. Conditioning will be a big one here as well. It not only removes all weight from your heavy armor, but it prevents the armor from slowing your movement speed down when worn. The Yukudan may dedicate one of his hands to defending with a shield, but with the next two skills, it won't matter because the damage of his one scimitar will be ridiculous. These skills will also make him an absolute tank in his Dwarven armor. First comes Smithing, and from this tree, take Arcane Blacksmith and Dwarven Smithing. With three perk points here, you'll be able to improve all of your gear, including the enchanted stuff, and with that said, the second skill is enchanting. From this skill tree, we suggest getting the middle branch up to extra effect. With all ranks of enchanter, your enchantments will be twice as strong, and with extra effect, you can have two enchantments on each item. With both of these skills and all of these perks, your gear will be untouchable. Our final skill is one which is rarely utilized by warriors. The Yakudan separates himself from the pack by being very well read, courtesy of his father, and by having a lifelong yearning for knowledge. With an understanding of alchemy, the Yakudan will be able to buff himself with potions while adding deadly poisons to his curved blade. From the alchemy skill tree, take the lot. Purity is well worth it when you get there, as it will allow you to make potions with no negative effect or positive effects in the case of poisons. And so there are the Yakudin skills and perks, but here's how they will work together in a playstyle. The Yakudin will prepare for combat by slamming a few potions and applying some toxic substances to his scimitar's edge. Then he can sprint in with his shield raised to knock enemies down before dicing them with the scimitar. It's a simple playstyle that will be hugely benefited by how well you prepare before the fight. Also, you can bash enemies who come too close and predict their strikes with your quick reflexes, heavily reducing incoming damage. As for gear, the Yakudin will wear a fully smithed up set of dwarven armor, including the shield. The only part of this set to ditch is the helmet. In its place, wear the Alaki hood, which can be bought from Radiant Raiment in Solitude. Also, chuck on a ring and a necklace for the added enchantment slots. Enchant all of this with as much Fortify one-handed as possible, and then look to magic resistances and plenty of frost resistance due to the amount of ice-type enemies who could potentially drain your stamina or slow you down. His weapon will be a fully smithed up scimitar enchanted with absorbed stamina and fiery soul trap. Use the black star from Azura's Daedric quest to help you keep it charged at all times. The last thing you'll need is plenty of homebrewed potions and poisons. Stamina regen and fortify one-handed are good potions to pick. One bit of advice when you get around to smithing is to first wear a full set of random armor and random jewelry enchanted with fortify smithing. Then do the same but with fortify alchemy. Then you can brew a potent smithing potion wear your enchanted smithing gear, and then you can make the best end game gear possible. Subscribe to Fudge Muppet and give the video a like if you enjoyed it guys. Don't forget that links to our social media accounts and timestamps for video navigation can be found just below in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching. I've been Scott and I look forward to nerding out with you again next time.